Discord server, join it. My friends, it is I, and I am once again very late to this party. Like literally everyone, I saw Squid Game shortly after it came out, at the height of its popularity. However, I was on, on the, the other, other side, side of, of the world, world at the time, and by the time I got back, Doodle Clones was being Doodle Clones, and my attention was therefore elsewhere. But even if I had all the time in the world, Squid Game would never have been at the top of my list of things to talk about. It's a great show, and everyone knows it's a great show, with great characters, great Great concepts, great socioeconomic themes about the dangers of late stage capitalism? Oh. Well, I guess the Korra Book 2 review can wait just a little bit longer. That's right, it's a blast from our past, because today we have an honest-to-god response video. And unlike the last cold-blooded capitalist we went after, this one will actually be about the economics. Speaking of cold-blooded capitalism, before we begin, a word from today's sponsor. Honeygain is an app that can be installed on your phone or personal computer. It's a simple program that allows you to sell your completely unused internet bandwidth. This means your internet speed will remain the same, with the only difference being that you'll be making a good bit of money on the side so long as your device is running. You get paid through PayPal, or crypto if that's your thing, and most importantly, Honeygain does not access your personal data. All network traffic is completely encrypted, meaning your information is secure. So if you want to support the channel while also making some extra money yourself, you can sign up using the first link in the description to claim a $5 bonus before you even start. Now, back to the video. This man, Foundation for Economic Education, oh my god, why is that his name, is a true-blooded capitalist. He loves the free market and will defend it to the day he dies. Squid Game is an insanely popular Netflix show that has some pretty harsh things to say about capitalism. Naturally, peace was never an option. So let's sit back, relax, and take a look at what THE Foundation for Economic Education has to say about Squid Game. Squid Game on Netflix is the insane mega hit that absolutely nobody saw coming. But personally, I kinda hated Squid Game. It's focused on telling the stories of people who made very specific life choices that led them down the wrong path. But at the same time, many of these people also blame the system for the economic situations they're in. And that's where Squid Game completely loses me. Ah, the classic no one to blame but yourself just stop being poor argument. It's an old one, but I can work with this. Foundation for Econom- Jesus Christ, can we shorten that somehow? Mr. Fee is no doubt now going to make the case that there's nothing wrong with with the game, everyone simply sucks at it. Let us observe the genius at work. Almost all of gi -hoon's problems are self-inflicted. In spite of being reasonably healthy, physically capable, and possessing at least average intelligence, he doesn't do anything remotely productive. The system isn't at fault here. He is. Yes! Over the course of the first episode, gi -hun lies, steals, and gambles away what little he has. What Mr. Fee fails to address is that gi -hun resorts to these actions when his job as a chauffeur consistently fails to make him enough money to support himself, let alone his daughter who he's in danger of losing when his ex-wife moves away to somewhere he obviously can't afford. Now, you might be tempted to ask why gi -hun hasn't put more time and effort into a career that isn't a dead end and will actually get him somewhere financially secure? The answer to that question is that he has, he did. Gihan worked a steady job at a factory for well over a decade, presumably accumulating the long-term increased wages that come with those years upon years of employment. However, that all changed when he was laid off along with all of his co-workers because the factory decided that paying them was too expensive. Is it Gihan's fault that his boss was able to end his livelihood all at once simply to save a quick buck? By the time the events of Squid Game take place, Gihan is already at rock bottom, and he is making decisions that are informed by the fact that he is at rock bottom. It's easy to look at these decisions and assume that Gihan was simply always a divorced, deadbeat dad who has gambling debts he's unable to pay off. But the truth of the matter is that this is a man who tried with everything he had and still came up short through circumstances completely beyond his control. This isn't even me making an argument against capitalism. This is an argument that the show itself already made, Mr. Fee has just utterly failed to address it. One of the most offensive moments in the show, for me, was when a bunch of people compared the difficulty of finding a job to being shot at by mass murderers and watching 50% of the people around you die every day. What? 
The flashback where we learn Gihan's backstory is a post-traumatic episode where his current job of watching his group's barricade reminds him of when he was on strike. A strike, by the way, that got one of his friends killed, all in an effort to save his livelihood because his wife was pregnant. He had a kid on the way. The entire point of the second episode of the show is that when you're at rock bottom, when the well-being and security of your loved ones, your family, your very life is in jeopardy, gambling with that life life for the chance to escape this hell really isn't that much of a leap. Gihan in particular has done it once before and witnessed the consequences firsthand. Far from being exploitative, capitalism as a system harnesses humans' natural self-interest in a way that makes serving your fellow man an essential requirement for success. The trouble starts when governments interfere with that system. Unfortunately, a lot of people mistakenly blame capitalism for problems that are actually caused by government intervention. Oh, God damn it! Look, I've already kicked the anarcho-capitalist nest once before, and they are still lurking in my comments literal years later. If you think I'm gonna kick that nest again, you are absolutely correct. Mr. Fee! These are nothing but blanket statements that sound like they were ripped straight from Cold War propaganda. It doesn't mean anything. There is literally no difference between what Mr. Fee just said, and simply saying capitalism good, government bad. There's nothing to argue here, it's just a claim and nothing else. It's like a lawyer going to court and making his opening statement, but then leaving the building before making an actual case. <laughs> Your Honor, in this trial, it will be blatantly obvious that this man is a murderer. Hi, good night, everybody. And what's worse, once again, the content within the show itself actively and consistently debunks this entire thesis statement from Mr. Fee. We've already covered Gihan, but Mr. Fee conveniently forgets crucial details about other characters as well. He's more than willing to point out that Ali accidentally caused his former boss's hand to get crushed in heavy machinery, but fails to mention that Ali did this while stealing money that his boss owed him because he's been working without pay for six months. This is a problem that government intervention actually solves with laws preventing worker exploitation, specifically immigrant worker exploitation. Let's revisit Gihan. He and all of his co-workers were fired for no reason. This is a problem that is inevitable with pure, unregulated capitalism because firing people saves money. It turns out that I'll save a whole nickel if I cut your salary. Completely. And yet, once again, the clear solution is government intervention in the form of laws and having a legal system in general allowing you to sue when this happens. I fail to see how the government forced Gihan's employer to fire him. I can, however, very easily see how the government can help Gihan receive the financial security that he is owed. Saobyuk is an immigrant and generally stigmatized social minority. Is it the government's fault that people don't want to hire her because of what she is? Is? That she has to resort to being a pickpocket? Is it the government's fault that the only people who hired Ali, another immigrant, paid him under the table and cheated him? I fail to see how the government could have done this, but I can see how the government can help. Laws protecting the workers' rights, unfair hiring practices being a legal concept at all. These are examples of government intervention in an otherwise capitalist system, and it's a good thing. And once again, this is not me making an argument against capitalism or even an argument in favor of government intervention. These aren't my arguments, I'm just pointing out what the show has already said through its story. These are not my epic get wrecked capitard arguments. These are simply arguments that Mr. Fee, Foundation for Economic Education, failed to make. He failed to address several core aspects of the characters he so casually dismisses as irresponsible. But more than anything, it's just a show about characters who actively choose not to take responsibility for themselves and wind up being destroyed by their own greed. He fails to address the many, many issues that Squid Game highlights which are not only very clearly not caused by government intervention, but would actually be solved by government intervention. But above all else, he failed to educate himself or anyone else about the economic concepts he so proudly pretends to know anything about. Good night, everybody.